adequate sleep affects about 45% of us, us Australians adults. That is nearly one in two individuals. So if you're not having sleep issues, the person next to you is having sleep issues. That is a lot of individuals who are not getting inadequate sleep to function at an optimal level. So I thought, I'll look into it. So before you go and pop your sleeping pill, please listen to this podcast to get an understanding how you can naturally assist your sleep to have an optimal sleep. So what I'm going to talk about in today's podcast is all about sleep. Number one, I'm going to go through what happens to our body if we don't get inadequate sleep. And then I'm going to talk about how passion flower may be able to assist you to get an optimal sleep and then how you are able to incorporate passion flower in your everyday life simple savvy so you can get optimal sleep and optimal health let's get straight into it It's Mondays with Mahela. That's right, me. Thank you so much for tuning in. I absolutely love, love, love and appreciate your support. For any of you who don't know me, I'm a qualified naturopath. My name is Mahela and I'm absolutely passionate about all things health, business and overall success. And today's Mondays with Mahela, where I provide you with simple, savvy and sustainable health hacks to optimize your health. And this is part of the Natural Health Podcast, which is available here on YouTube, here on a video form or on any other podcast like Spotify, Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, whatever it's called these days, it's available there as an audio version. So let's get into today's episode, which is all about achieving optimal sleep whilst using passion flower. So a lot of us, a lot of us here in Australia have issues with our sleep. We have so many issues with our sleep and it affects us on a dramatic level that we don't even think about every single day. So what I wanted to talk about today is the dangers of not sleeping at your optimal level every single night. So sleep is a fundamental biological requirement for human health. Over the past 20 years, there has been an increased interest in the bi-directional association between sleep and adverse health effects. So what this is saying, we're looking at what happens when we are not sleeping enough and what effects it has on our health. Sleep disorders can affect the quality of sleep and insufficient time allowed to be available for sleep can also lead to inadequate sleep or sleep quality. So there's a number of issues that can go wrong with sleep. It's either you're not falling asleep or you're waking up during a sleep or you're even waking up not refreshed. These are all sleep issues. Specific sleep disorders such as sleep apnea have been strongly linked to a variety of health problems and chronic diseases such as coronary heart disease, stroke, diabetes, hypertension, depression, erectile dysfunction, cognitive impairment, and even your death rate risk even going higher. That is absolutely huge. And it's all got to do with a simple thing as sleeping every night, right? Shortened sleep time also um, carries health risks and may adversely affect metabolic health through changes in the activity of neuroendocrine system, which, have, which I'll go into, which affects our metabolic system. Studies have shown sleeping less than six or seven hours. Sorry, yes, yeah, so if you're sleeping less than six or seven hours on average per night, it may increase the risk of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and even heart disease. That is anyone who's sleeping less than six or seven hours a night. And I know so many people who are not getting more than seven hours sleep. Yeah, so sleep deprivation affects the body's metabolism, including your glucose metabolism. So all those individuals that are like, I need to lose weight. I need to go on a diet. I need to exercise. No, you need to sleep. That's what you need to do. Doesn't make sense in our brain, does it? But what happens is laboratory studies have cons consistently found short-term sleep loss decreases glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity. Research also found that when sleep deprived, people increase intake of comfort food such as high sugar and high fat. So I know I know about myself when I'm you know not getting enough sleep or you know I've had minimum sleep for whatever reason. Those chips look so good to me because they give us instant energy and that's how brain is made to survive, right? Short sleep also reduces natural immune function, increasing the risk of infections and even the possibility of increasing the risk of 
cancer, unfortunately. Reduced sleep is also uh, also linked to hypertension and heart disease, possibly by triggering an overactivity in immune stress response, such as the sympathetic nervous system and even inflammation. So unfortunately, as we can see here, sleep has also been linked to cancer, which is quite sad. But it'll be interesting to see if you know anyone who has cancer, what their sleep schedule was like be before they had cancer or even while they have cancer. The scope of sleep problems here in Australia, here at home, have been examined only by a number of studies. But these studies are good because we can actually see where things are going and where we want things to go. So in 2010, the one study that I found was in 2010, the Sleep Health Foundation commissioned a telephone survey of 1,512 Australians aged between 14 and 70 years old. The study found sleep difficulties such as inability and maintenance sleep and daytime symptoms such as fatigue, sleepiness and irritability are reported and occur most days by 20 to 50% of the population. So being fatigued is not just the thing that you may have, it's the thing that half of the population of Australia may have. The prevalence of sleep disorders such as sleep apnea is reported to have increased sensitivity over recent years in line with that of obesity. So they say obesity has gone up and thus sleep apnea has gone up. So there may be a link there. So in addition, lifestyle behaviors that influence sleep, such as the use of internet devices and consumption of energy drinks are reported to have increased. For these reasons, the current prevalence of impact of sleep disorders and problems in the Australian community needs to be addressed and looked at to see what we are able to do. Recent, I found this interesting and I wanted to share this with you. Research indicates adults who get fewer than seven hours sleep, whether just one night or over several months have increased concentration difficulties and mood disturbances compared with people who sleep seven or not to nine hours per night. Common daytime consequences of this include irritability, fatigue, lack of energy, and poor memory. Like, when was the last time that you were irritable? When was the last time that you were fatigued? Did you have a good night's sleep? That is my question. Think about it. So I wanted to point out some facts that I found were really interesting in regards to sleep, in regards to our Australian population to get to know a little bit better in regards to sleep. So females, 40% are more likely than males, 26% to experience difficulty in falling asleep, right? That is interesting. The females have more issues falling asleep than males do. Nearly half, 47% of women wake often overnight, which is a problem that also increases significantly with age. Frequent loud snoring is reported by 24% of men and only 17% of women. So more men snore than women. A doctor diagnosis of sleep apnea was over three times more common in men than women. So sleep apnea is more common in men than women. Daytime symptoms related to insufficient on or unrefreshing sleep, such as sleepiness, fatigue, or feeling irritable are common, being seen as 30 to 39% of adults. So like I said to you, if you're feeling fatigued, you're not the only one. There's about 30 to 50% of individuals that are feeling the symptoms that you're feeling, and it may be just because you didn't have a good night's sleep. Duration of reported sleep was around seven hours of average on weekdays, but 35, 35 minutes longer on weekends. So we all tend to sleep in on the weekends. Um, this is saying 35 minutes more than we do on weekdays. And so what happened, what I also found is that 44% of adults are on the internet just before bed almost every single night. So this is where the blue light, this blue light right here affects us, it affects us, it increases our circadian rhythm, it doesn't increase our circadian rhythm, but it makes us believe that it is daytime, which messes up our circadian rhythm. Over half of the adults watch TV before bed. Napping was more common, common among men, with 44% of men taking two or more nips per week compared to 36% of women. And napping has an interlink with metabolic syndrome, so it's something to keep an eye out. I might do a podcast on that. Half of women, 50%, and 38% of men find it somewhat or difficult to get back to sleep if they're waking up during the night. So now we have some facts that you can see what sleep or not getting adequate sleep does to our health. So now what do we do about it? Do you just go and go and pop that sleeping pill, which may have some, which probably has some side effects to your body, and you probably can't do that every single night? Or do you consider alternative methods such as natural methods to assist you with your sleep. I've spoken about sleep on a number of my podcasts before episodes, so please look at them before me even 
looking at this one because let's talk about little lifestyle tips that you can incorporate before incorporating passion flower into your sleep routine but let's look at what the science has to say about passion flower and sleep i absolutely love it so passion flower also known as passia flora incarnatana is a traditional herb it's a sedative and anxiolytic, anxiolytic and a popular sleep aid used for the treatment of sleep disturbances i absolutely love passion flower i absolutely love passion flower it grows in warm tropical climates including north and south america mexico west india netherlands well that's not really tropical is it i don't know where that came from but anyway argentina and italy it has a long history of traditional use in european Ayurvedic, cedar and Yunani medicine system as a powered herb tea or herbal extract. So it has been used for centuries, centuries for traditional use. So now why don't we use it now in a modern medicine to assist us with such a common issue like sleep. Studies in animals suggest that the extract of passion flower has a sedative, anxiolytic, anesthetic and antispasmodic effect but a specific components responsible for these effects cannot be identified so i'll tell you a bit later about certain parts of the passion flower that show these um effects also but some of them some of them they're saying they can't really be identified more research needs to be done the herb is used most frequently as a mild sleeping medication sedative and treatment for gastrointestinal gastrointestinal complaints often in the form of a herbal tea but also in multiple other variations and it can also be combined with other herbs which you probably see if you look at a sleeping mix you'll probably see valerian in it you'll probably see hops in it lavender and so forth because them combined together have a synergical effect on your body making it yeah your body just has a synergical effect with all those herbs together helping with sleep but we're just looking at passion flower by itself at the moment so passion flower, um, the side effects of oral use are not common, but may include dizziness, sedation, confusion, and being a little bit confused about things that are happening and also just a bit drowsy in a sense. Not drowsy, it's more it's more uh, sleepy, sedation, right? Which is what you kind of want when you're going to sleep, right? Okay, so let's get into how it works. Before we go into how it works, I want to give you a little bit of an insight of GABA, right? What is GABA? I'm actually might do a podcast just on GABA because GABA itself is just absolutely amazing, right? Um, so the sleep-wake cycle is governed by the inhibition effects of GABA. There are two binding sites that respond to the synapse release of GABA, which is termed GABA-A and GABA-B receptors. Whilst both receptors show inhibitory effect, the actions differ functionally. And I might go into more detail about that in one of my podcasts, right? So, for um, so so what we can talk about is let's look at in so let's look at GABAergen response. So the reason so when I spoke about having a taking a pill to help you go to sleep, this is this pill works on GABA a receptor. Okay, so this is what it works on. So GABAergenic responses form the target of many of the clinically used drugs prescribed for sleep disturbances and anxiety as GABA and glutamate act as inhibitory and exhibitory neurotransmitters right so GABA is the one that slows it down glutamate is the one that pushes it up so glutamate is excitatory and GABA is inhibitory neurotransmitter so they have to have a balance the right ratio balance it up to make sure that sleep quality anxiety and so forth and excitement is all balanced remember our body needs to be balanced right Therefore, maintaining an optimal GABA and glutamate balance is imperative for achieving stability in these areas. Passion flower possesses pharmaceutical properties that innovated GABA and glutamate and neurotransmitters. The mechanisms of this herbs extra sedative and anxiolytic actions with comparable effects of those observed in pharmaceutical interventions, benefiting sleep quality and anxiety to improve patient's outcomes. And I'm going to detail about a few research studies down there but this is saying that passion flower has similar effects to pharmaceuticals used for anxiety and sleep just have a think about that what how that can change your life taking passion flower instead of those pharmaceutical supplements 
Okay, so passion flower also is bursting with sleep promoting flavonoids, which is aptigenin, seems to have a special affinity for the central um, benzodiaphan receptor, and through its relationship may have ties to GABA receptors. Another bioflavonoid by the name of CHRYSIN, chrysin, is found in abundant supply in passion flower, right? As demonstrated, anxiolytic muscle relaxant and sedative effects the anti-anxiety muscle relaxing and just sedative effects right boosting GABA levels also does has the sedative effects this is showing that that passion flower is just oh just thinking about it makes me just relaxed and calm i'll tell you a little bit of my secret what i do is if i ever do a talk right i'm feeling a little bit anxious because as any other human being, we all get anxious, right? It's a normal part of our life to be anxious. Uh, if we go back to survival, uh, if we don't get anxious, we wouldn't survive. So for all those individuals back in the days who weren't anxious, they were dead. It's either you were anxious or you were dead. But the difference was the anxiety didn't go on forever like it does for some individuals. But going back to my stories, what I do is if I'm feeling a little bit anxious before I go somewhere or before I'm about to talk about something or even sometimes before some podcasts, I have a little bit of a little bit of passion flower in my back, um, a herbal extract, have a little bit, sip on it, and that instantly, instantly, I'm telling you, instantly calms me. Right? And it is not a placebo. It's definitely not a placebo. And you know what? It, like even if it was a placebo, it's absolutely amazing because it calms me. It does what it's supposed to do. But when you understand the science and when you understand the body, and when you understand this herb, you know this is not a placebo. You know what receptors it works on and how it works in your body. So there is a little thing that I do with passion flower, right? But let's look at the research. This is where I want to look at the research, right? Research one that I want to look at is they use passion flower tea one cup and they saw that it may improve sleep quality in the short term, right? So it was a in a double blinded placebo controlled investigation, 41 adults consumed either a placebo or passion flower tea, and the tea bag contained two grams of passion flower before bed for one week. Two grams of passion flower tea one hour before bed. I think it was one hour, was it? I didn't even say one hour, sorry. For one week. They took it for one week. According to a personal sleep diary, they said that anxiety, inventory, sleep quality had a significantly better rating for the passion flower than placebo, right? So the study concluded that the consumption of a low dose of passion flower in the form of a tea yields short-term subjective sleep benefits for healthy adults with mild uh, issues with sleep, right? So this is just saying taking a tea, I would say about an hour or so before bed, two grams for one week assisted with sleep quality. The other one that I want to talk about in a multi-central prospective non-interventional study, non-inventional study, the efficacy of passion flower symptoms associated with nervous tension, including insomnia, was assessed. Of 154 study participants, 96.8% experienced sleep disturbances prior to the treatment across 12 week period. All participants received an average dose of 1,020 milligrams um, of dr dried extract from passion flower herb. The results of this study demonstrated a statistical significance regarding improvement in sleep disturbance across the treatment period, indicating that passion flower has positive effect of sleep quality and maintenance. So not just the quality, but also maintenance, making sure that you stay asleep, but that your sleep is also at an amazing quality. Number three study that I want to look at is a double-blinded crossover clinical trial aimed to compare the effects of passion flower with midazolam, which is used for procedural sedation and for trouble sleeping. It works by inducing sleepiness and decreases anxiety, right? In control, in the control of the anxiety patients undergoing, um, they're undergoing a surgery. So 40 participants were randomized to receive either 260 uh, milligrams of passion flower or 15 milligrams of midzolan 30 minutes prior to surgery so either the pharmaceutical drug or passion flower 30 minutes before surgery so the cochrane dental anxiety scale was used to assess the anxiety levels of subjects at three different times the initial consultation followed by the first and second surgical procedure in addition to completing that um cochrane dental anxiety Scale researchers also measured blood pressure, heart rate, 
and blood oxygen saturation in order to monitor the changes of their anxiety. So they use a number of things to see what their anxiety levels are like. Yeah, this is, this is so interesting. I find this stuff absolutely amazing. So analysis compared the mean difference between groups receiving either passion flower or mid mid azolam mid lazolam. I'm so bad at pronouncing these things. I, I, like I always say, I'm a naturopath. I am not an English teacher. And they found no statistical difference between treatment groups at any interval related to measurements of blood pressure, heart rate, and oxygen variation. These results indicated passion flower had comparable anxiolytic activity to that of the drug. Furthermore, a significantly greater uh, proportion of participants um, received that received the pharmaceutical reported memory interference following the procedure, whilst participants that received passion flower showed little or no memory interference. So it shows here that it showed anti-anxiety effects also with sleep that can be putting in because a lot of people can't sleep because they have anxiety, their brain is just going, whoa, like mine is at the moment. <laughs> so it showed that taking the pharmaceutical drugs, you may have some side effects. However, taking the, taking the passion flower, there's no side effects with your memory. So what we went through is we spoke about sleep, what sleep does when we don't get enough sleep in our body, how it affects our body to cause disease unfortunately and then we spoke about passion flower how passion flower helps us reduce anxiety and reduce increase our sleep quality and sleep efficiency now how do you incorporate passion flower in your sleep routine let's talk about it so what i want to say first of all when incorporating any herb into your lifestyle please talk to a healthcare professional understand so they understand what medication what herbs what supplements you are on already so there's no miscommunication, no, no issues happening there. So you need to ensure that the herb does not contraindicate any medication that you're taking at the moment. So safety during pregnancy and lactation has not been established. However, no adverse effects has been reported in regards to passion flower. So what we need to understand is, is that taking passion flower in addition to any other pharmaceutical sedative is dangerous do not do it or talk to talk to a healthcare professional before you do it so um, and it also may impair your ability to drive and use machinery so please ensure that when you do take it you actually go to sleep you don't take it and go drive a truck you don't take it and go drive a car or do something that you need your full attention to right so like i said oral passion flower may cause dizziness confusion sedation but it's very very rare so how do you take passion flower? What I would highly suggest is, is getting passion flower tea. Start off with a tea. Teas are absolutely beautiful. Because when you think about it, the whole procedure, or well, the whole the whole ritual of making a tea, the whole ritual of sitting down, holding a warm cup, the whole ritual of drinking that tea, knowing that it's doing amazing things to your body, that in itself causes your body to go into a parasympathetic mode which essentially assists with sleep. So teas are absolutely beautiful at night time or whenever you're going to sleep to incorporate in there. So what it would say is about 0.5 to 2.5 grams of dried herbs of passion flower an hour before bed. See what happens. But at the same time, like I said, talk to healthcare professionals to get an understanding of what is right for you. This isn't just for everyone. This is individualized medicine. So see how passion flower assists with your sleep with your anxiety before sleep let me know let me know if you've tried this and if it has helped you because i know it has helped me it has done absolutely amazing wonders i absolutely love passion flower that is why i wanted to share the herb with you so you are able to assist and make your sleep as optimal as possible so then you are not getting those diseases that your body can get if you're not getting the optimal sleep. There you have it. Share this episode with someone who needs a good night's sleep. Someone that you know is cranky, is moody, is irritable, <laughs> or just someone that needs absolutely amazing sleep. Share this with them. Do what you do best. Love, like, share, rate, review the Natural Health Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next Monday, love you. 